The traditional press may be in trouble, but the Internet's not necessarily in great shape either. In the days after WikiLeaks released the government cables, one after another, Internet service providers hosting the organization dropped their service. Then Amazon, which rented WikiLeaks' so-called cloud space, cut them off. And PayPal and MasterCard, which handled their donations. In New York, program or be programmed author Doug Rushkoff sounded the alarm. And CUNY professor and author of What Would Google Do, Jeff Jarvis, proposed an Internet Bill of Rights. The, the question that this situation has made transparent is, do we want a real Internet? You know, do we want that? You know, we don't have a real Internet yet. We don't have the Internet that we think we have, this sort of peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, uncontrollable anarchist network. No, we have a highly top-down DNS, centrally controlled. They can flip you off as fast as a, you flick off a light switch. We don't want to rack on there, but they're gone. Right? Oh, no, we can use a, you know, domain name numbers. And, oh, yeah, right. You know, I'm sure our, our iPads with their glass touchscreens are going to allow us to reconfigure our domain name servers, you know? That's an easy one. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> and the question of whether we want a real net is really the question about whether we want a real democracy, whether we feel we're ready for real democracy. You know, Walter Lippmann and John Dewey had a nice, long, uh, a spirited debate in the early 1900s where Lippmann basically said, no, the people are not ready. They're too stupid. They're uneducated. They can't run themselves. We need a benevolent elite to do this for them and create the illusion of democracy. Well, the net is a great illusion of democracy right now. It's a great illusion, but it is totally top-down controlled. It is completely centralized to the point where the only way that real people found out about any of this stuff was through the New York Times and The Guardian anyway. Right? It's not that the net distributed this stuff. It's that the net allowed for the supposedly anonymous transfer of the data by a guy that we know, right? And where did he get it? I mean, I, and not to get conspiratorial, but I don't even believe, I, I don't know what to believe, right? I don't know what to believe. Who, how did they, what is a leak? A leak means someone leaked something. Does it, does, it do, doesn't necessarily mean that the structure itself has a hole in it through which data is leaking. But most of the kids I talk to think this is the net because we have a great decentralized network. They don't understand the architecture of this thing. They think this is happening because the media has somehow uh, uh, wrestled control from the powers that be. It, it is not. It is not. The powers that be so far are allowing this amount of chaos to occur. To occur. And, and as surely as I'm sitting here, this event will be the argument used when net neutrality comes up on the floor of the Congress why we should give up control of this, of this two, two corporations, why the scale needs to be tipped back in favor of, of, of central authorities. You know, a, an ad-driven for-profit net does not do the job that we're talking about here, right? It, it promotes top-down and centralized control through the accumulation of capital and all that. You know, the, the, the public net would, could, did. And, I, and I, believe, I believe that this situation makes visible the possibility for the kind of net that would actually be a peer-to-peer, -peer mesh network, decentralized thing that's possible. Because the problem when these things happen is we have nothing to point to, no flag in the ground to say, you're violating this. Well, what's this? What's the violation? Where is the principle? We, the people of the internet, the eighth continent, as the CTO of the Veterans Administration calls it, must set those principles. Now, I've had the, the hubris to put up a set of principles online, and I'm inspired by the Reverend Leon Sullivan, who set the, the Sullivan principles against apartheid in 1977. It was those principles that gave a flag to point to, to say, that's wrong. We think that's wrong. And it was independent. And of course, those principles live on today for corporate responsibility. And so we need some set of principles so that if you look at China, Google enforced its principles in finally a good way, I think, in China. We can disagree about that another day. But then they turned around and did a deal with Verizon, split up the Sudetenland with none of us at the table. So as much as I'm a Google fanboy, I wrote the book, 
I don't want Google to be the one to defend the principles of the internet. Neither does Google want to be in that position. We must be. So I had the hubris to put up a third revision of a Bill of Rights. I'll read this to you really quickly. It's very short. I'm wrong in many of these points, but what I want is discussion about this. So here are my suggestions. One, we have the right to connect. Two, we have the right to speak freely. Three, we have the right to assemble and act. Four, information should be public by default, secret by necessity. Five, what is public is a public good. Six, all bits are created equal. And seven, the internet shall be operated openly. Argue with me, change those, but let's have that discussion. Let's have principles to point to for this, our new world. Because if we do not, we leave it by default to the governments and corporations, not all of whom are evil, as Esther said, but who are inevitably acting in their own self-interest. We must act in ours. You're watching Grit TV's coverage of excerpts from a forum hosted by Personal Democracy Forum this December 12th in New York.